In this video, I'm going to show how to extract a data table from a PDF document. This is a very common problem. To do this, you can use the Camelot tool and Python package, which is easy to install. Let me show you the basic problem first and why this is an issue. This is a very simple example PDF document. This could in fact be your bank statement or many other kinds of documents that are produced in PDF format and might have a table of purchases, credit card charges, stock prices, many different things turn up in PDF documents. What you'd like to do is to get this data table here and cut and paste it to other programs, to spreadsheets for example, put it in a text or Word documents, a variety of sources. Well, let's look at what happens if we try to capture this data by a simple, ordinary selection. As you can see, it's kind of a pain in the neck. Anyway, um, all right, well, I'm just going to let that for the purposes of doing this. Let's go ahead and copy it. And we've already got this problem. We weren't able to select the zero, but let's see what happens here. Now, I'm going to paste it here, and here we go. And of course it didn't do it there. Let's try this. There we go. Okay. It went to a different clipboard. But the basic point you can see here is things got merged together. We don't have the table structure anymore. And that's the problem that we have with the, the PDF table collecting it that way. So what can we do then? What we need is some kind of tool that can actually extract the table from this. Okay. I'll now show you what Camelot is. All right, so what I've done here is I've set up a virtual environment at, from scratch which can run Camelot. So the reason for doing that is because Camelot has a lot of other Python packages that it also needs installed, which are listed right here. PIP list will do that, and these are all installed in this environment. So it's set up essentially from scratch to run Camelot. And I will show after this how to actually set this up and install Camelot because that's important. It's not entirely straightforward to install Camelot. You might do it and luck out and it works, but it could also cause some problems. So I'll show you how I did this. But first, I just want to show you the Camelot tool, which got installed with the Camelot package. This brings up the help message for it. And we'll wait a few seconds for it to come up. There we go. There it is. All right. So we have a Camelot command, we have options here, we have a command which is either lattice or stream, and then we follow that as it will turn out with the name of the PDF file. So you can see the version that you have, for example, let me just show you my version. Okay, that's the version option, that's very common in commands today. So this is 0 0.9.0, um, we can suppress logs, we... Uh, here we can specify which pages in the PDF document the tables will be extracted from. So our PDF document might have, instead of my simple example with one page and one table, it could have ten pages and five or six different tables on different pages. So we can specify the pages or we can say all the pages. Uh, we can specify password, we can specify our output, etc. I'm going to go ahead and run the program now. So I'm going to do an output file, which will be demo camelot.csv, and we want to do the type, which is here. It can output the extracted table as a CSV, a comma-separated values file, a JSON file, an Excel spreadsheet, an HTML file, or the SQLite database. I'm just going to do CSV because that's very simple. Then I'm going to do stream, and I'm going to do example PDF. All right. So that's the command. This is not the best, clearest interface here. It can get confused and put example.pdf in the wrong place or stream in the wrong place. So again, the sequence is the command, the options, dash O, dash F, the command, stream or lattice, followed by ending with the PDF file. Okay, so I processed one page. And let me show you what came out. So it generates a CSV file, demo Camelot page one. So uh, if there were multiple pages, it would show you the page of the table. So let me show you what's in there. More, this output file. And the data we're interested in shows up 
as a comma separated file which you can then cut and paste you can import this into Excel for example or another spreadsheet many databases can import CSV files are very widely supported many programming languages you know the pandas uh, module in Python can do it all these kind of things so now we have it in an easily usable accessible form in fact on a Windows system and this is a Windows computer having selected it here in the DOS window I can hit return and it will copy it and then let's go over here just to show what now happens there we go so now we have our table in a comma separated format and we could actually go through if we wanted to for example so here we might want to replace the comma with let's say five spaces three four five and then I'm gonna hit shift bang in Emacs and now I've got a space delimited version of this and so on so I could convert it into various formats and manipulate it and that's the basic idea that's what we want to do so let me just show that again to kind of reinforce the message before I go on so again we have the Camelot command here and it does have a help but it doesn't quite spell out the exact order of all the options unfortunately it's not clear where you should put um, in particular the input file name all right, so that's there. We have Camelot. Let me just show where it is on my system. Okay, so I created this environment, which is a subfolder with all everything self-contained within this folder. So I have a reproducible environment here using the virtual environment in Python. So in scripts, it put the Camelot command. Now what I can do is say Camelot dash output and here we'll do something near and dear to my or actually let me do demo uh, let's say 2 dot csv dash f again the format is going to be csv that i'm going to generate then i want to do the stream command and then i want to do the example dot pdf file which is a simple simple table in pdf format but it can handle much more complicated pdf files and um, again i'm just going to see actually what came out i'll so here we go. It uses demo2, which is the name I gave it. Gives you the page and table for each CSV file. So again, it's nothing very surprising is going to happen here, or shouldn't happen here. Here we go. So again, the same thing happened. The information got put in here. If I just want to access the comma, you know, the table data itself, including the headers, I can select that in the DOS window or by some other means, right? I could open the CSV file in. Uh, an editor like Emacs or Vim or Notepad++. I hit return and then let's go back over here. We'll, put, we'll copy and paste this one more time just to reinforce the message. So you can see that that works fine and Camelot is working fine for me. Um, let me just show a couple of other things quickly. I have Python 3.9.4. It's pretty recent. Uh, this video is being produced on June 21st, 2021. And so that's the Python version that we have and let me just show you once again all the packages that have to be installed for Camelot. So, to wait a little bit. And here it shows you the different versions of these different packages uh, that Camelot requires. So, this is Camelot py. This is the, the main package. And the pip install, which I'll show later, is able to automatically install all of these requirements for installing Camelot. Now I'm going to show how to install the Camelot data table extraction package and the Camelot tool from scratch on a Windows 10 computer. I'm going to walk through this full install that I did in Windows 10. So I have a LG Graham laptop. It's running Windows 10. And I will set up a virtual environment where I'll go through the installation process for Camelot from scratch. Uh, this is Camelot on the PyPy website, so here you can see uh, the files and some of the information on the project. Um, let's just go on to doing the install now. Okay, so here we are. All right, so the first step we want to do is to do the installation or setting up the, ex the virtual environment. So the way we do that is Python. Let me just show what version I have of Python. 3.9.4. Python module VANV, that's one of the built-in virtual environment guys, packages. 
and then we're going to say exponent 4 dash env. So let me run that. It'll take a few seconds. It will set up a folder which is going to have a self-contained uh, Python environment where we will install all the packages and we can run that particular environment reproducibly run Camelot or whatever programs we're working on. Uh, sometimes different packages have different requirements that are not compatible, different versions of other packages they require. And uh, okay, so we got that. So let me just show you this subfolder. Okay, it has an include, a lib, it has a scripts guy in it. So the next thing that I'm going to do is exponent for env scripts. Uh, I'm sorry, well, scripts has to be a backspace. And we're going to do activate to turn it on. Okay. So now we've created this environment. It's very simple. Okay, we do pip list to see the packages that are installed. Now notice it's warning me that I have an out of date or an earlier version of pip and we need to upgrade and that this is important. So let me just take a look at that, right? I, this is what I did here. So what I want to do is exp4 env, okay, slash scripts, slash python, cm pip install dash dash upgrade pip okay so we're going to try to update it to the latest greatest version of pip pip is this installation tool so you can see it's doing something it's a, installing and upgrading pip okay this will take a few seconds successfully installed pip 21.1.2 all right so now to see what happens we'll do pip list again and now we have 21.1.2. Okay, we have the latest greatest pip. This is the version that worked for me, latest greatest. And what are we going to do next? Okay, what we want to do is install Camelot. There's actually a couple of different um, install commands. Um, so this is the one that has worked for me so far. Um, so um, uh, let me uh, paste it in an overt way. Okay, so what's happening here is pip is going to install Camelot-py. And there's actually a couple different of these targets. There's one which is just Camelot, I believe. One is Camelot-py. And the one that has worked on my system is this bracket CV close bracket. So if you do encounter problems, look specifically for instructions on installing Camelot. And I may add some information to subsequent videos or blog posts. But for now, this is what seems to work for me. So let's go ahead. Now, what this is going to do is it's going to install Camelot in this exp-env environment which is a self-contained environment we can activate and deactivate to run Camelot or whatever system we have set up. All right, so here it goes. So it's starting to install the requirements for Camelot. So pandas, click, chardet, pypdf2 is a PDF document handling package, numpy, numerical programming, um, opencv, which is a computer vision package, a whole bunch of stuff that it requires is automatically installed from the internet now using pip install and right now I'm not using wheels I don't have that installed in future blog posts or videos I may go into some things about what to do with wheel but for now this is what I what is working so it takes a while for everything to install all right it's installing pi pdf2 and again it takes a while to install all of this content off the internet. I should mention I have a very high speed connection. I can download several megabits per second. Actually, I can download at times close to 50 megabits per second. Now, some of you out there may say, well, so what? Um, but that to me is pretty amazing. I grew up with much slower download speeds. So, um, all right, so it's taking its time to install the packages required by, uh, there we go, okay. So let's see what we see when we do look for Camelot. Actually, let me do this as well. You may not have which, um, which is a Unix thing. It got installed by, I think, my Git code or something like that. Git is a version control system I and many people use, but where is actually the DOS command. So, um, so we actually have a couple, um, versions of Camelot here. The one that's important here is the one installed in this um, 
environment here. So um, Camelot, that's the one that will be gotten first. So again, it is, again, we have to wait a little while for this to happen. You get the version of Camelot that was installed. There we go, and 0 0.9.0, just like before. Uh, let's just do pip list. This is going to list the installed uh, packages in this environment. And see, we've got everything. So we got Camelot. We got all this stuff that was installed up here. So it looks like we're ready to go. So Camelot. Um, again, let's just do the help. Make sure the help works. Basic sanity check. If it crashes on the help, something must be wrong. And now we put the command in. Then we do the options. So we start with, we're going to output this to um, demo, let's say, 4, or actually 4, because we're in environment 4, dot CSV. We're going to have output in CSV, that's comma separated values file format. We have many options. We could use JSON files, we could output Excel spreadsheet files, HTML, hypertext markup language from the web, or SQLite, which is a database, SQL is structured query language. Okay, so we got all that. Now what we want to do is put one of these commands in. And so far I've had good results with stream, but they do do different things. I don't yet fully understand what those two do. So you may have to experiment with these if you have problems uh, extracting the tables from your PDF file. So example.pdf. Now that's my simple example. Let's just remind people what that is. That's this file here. It has one table on one page in a simple PDF document. What we were liking to get a hold of is this actual data, the actual table in a table, some sort of table format, which we can paste into a spreadsheet, we can manipulate as a columnar table. All right, so here we go. To wait a little while. And so it processed one page, gives you a date timestamp when it did it, found one table. Again, that should be this table. All right. So let me now look at the output from it. I'm going to do this. This is the DOS deer command. Order it by date. And I'm only interested in the CSV files. Now notice here I have one called demo4, page 1, table 1. So demo4 is what I specified up here. And then it says this is page 1, table 1 in this CSV file. I can select it like so. Hit return to copy it in the DOS window. And then we can do the following. Okay. I'm going to see what the output was. And yes, as we hoped, we have comma separated values data. We can select that again in the DOS window. We select it, we hit return. Now that's what's in the, in the, um, in this thing. I'm going to repeat this again. I have used more to see the CSV file data, which is extracted from the um, PDF file example.pdf. I select it in the DOS window like this. I hit return. I now have it here copied and I will go over here all right now I have this and I'm going to all right there it is so there's the data I pasted it into Emacs and I could actually do that again just to remind people of what I'm doing so again I've got the data in a usable format where I can paste it into editors spreadsheets and so forth I can use query replace or uh, other replace features in editors and so on to change the commas to spaces to tabs, change the format to various text file formats that I can then manipulate and import. Camelot is a Python add-on package. It has functions in it that allow you to write programs which can extract tables, data tables from PDF documents. So for example, maybe you have hundreds of monthly statements as each is a PDF document from your bank and you want to process them all, get all that data into a spreadsheet or other database, you can write a program that will do that with Camelot. This concludes this video presentation. If you like this video, please click like. Please click subscribe and the notification bell if you would like to receive more content from us. You can avoid internet censorship by subscribing directly to our RSS news feed. 
please consider sharing the link by email and on your website or blog, in addition to liking, upvoting, or sharing on increasingly censored, advertising beholden, big company social media. We have encountered such censorship. Mathematical software is developing algorithms and software to automate data analysis, reducing the risks of costly errors, and increasing the predictive power of the results. You can support our work financially by subscribing on our Patreon page, https colon slash slash www.patreon.com slash mathsoft, or scanning the QR code in the lower right corner.